What is up guys, it is your boy ncs 7 here, welcome to a new video. Now, today's discussion video is going to be a little bit different, and it's not going to be the most positive video ever, so I do apologize in advance for that, but don't worry, there'll be more positivity later down the line at some point, I don't know when. But today, I'm going to be talking about Sony, and kind of just why I've just felt like Sony hasn't been doing very much lately, and how I feel like they've been going, getting worse and worse, honestly, as a company. Now... I'm pretty sure to most of you watching, a lot of you are probably just like, well, duh, of course they are. But I kind of want to talk about why I'm specifically starting to lose a bit of interest in Sony and why I feel like they're not doing a very good job as a company right now. So let's get right into it. Starting off with the first point, and, and I know this is a very, it's been talked about to death, but the, the lack of PlayStation 5s, seriously, even like almost two years after it first released and PlayStation 5s are still hard to get. Now, to be fair, I got my PlayStation 5 back in, like, February of 2021, and it was pretty early on in the system's lifespan, but even so, though, even to this day, I still hear that it's not that easy, and the way Sony goes about it is just so backwards. Like, they'll do it in, like, the weirdest ways. Like, I, I don't know completely because, again, I bought one a long time ago, and I'm sure that thing's changed. For me, back in the day, what you had to do was go on PlayStation Direct, you'd be in, put in a queue, and somewhere in the line and you just have to hope to be at the front of the line to buy the system which is what i was able to do but like now i've heard that it are more so giveaways and stuff like that and that they do it through like like i think like playstation plus or maybe on like the store i'm not sure but even so though playstation 5s are still too hard to get and they mostly rely on buying them online unless you buy off of someone else for above msrp and that's the thing is that I wish that Sony would actually put the PlayStation 5s in actual stores, like in physical stores, not just on online retailers, but like put it in Targets, put it in Walmarts, put it in Best Buys, make it available for people to purchase in the store. At Microsoft's been doing that. They, I've been actually starting to notice that they've actually been putting Series Xs in store shelves and that's how I got my Series S. After work one day i went to walmart and i bought myself an xbox series s i didn't have to go online and go in a stupid queue hoping to maybe get it that's not what i had to do and that's the thing is that's just and listen i know some people are gonna be like oh but chip shortage that's not true they've been able to ship so many units at this point that that's just not true yes i'm sure that they may not have as many systems as demand wants but the way they sell it is absolutely ridiculous they basically make sure that they get any profit they can they don't just put it on store shelves. And to be honest, I feel like people would eat up pretty quickly on store shelves. But if they make the PlayStation 5 limited and they sell it in a very special way, they'll all get sold out, which makes Sony maximum profit. You see what I mean? I kind of feel like they're trying to do that. Not like not because they can't, but because of the fact that they know that if they make it limited and put it online, they can get the most money possible. And listen, they already have enough money. Stop doing that. Now, it's not the biggest issue for someone who actually does own a system like me and most of my friends, but even so, it's still annoying, especially the people that still don't have it and have been trying since day one to get it. But even so, that's pretty much all I have to say for that. And going on to number two, and this is where it actually does kind of impact PS5 users, and that is the game output. I will be completely honest, I do not think that Sony's done very good with game output at all in a while. To be fair, this year has had a good amount of releases. To be honest, they had Horizon, Forbidden West, and then Elden Ring came out like a week later and nullified that game. Still a good game, but still. Gran Turismo 7, which was kind of controversial, but I still think that was a pretty solid game. And then we recently had The Last of Us Part 1 remake, which a lot of people did not like. <laughs> a lot, of, it was, it was dev, it was a little ridiculous if I'm gonna be completely honest. And then we're also getting God of War Ragnarok like this fall. But what about after that? What are we gonna get afterwards? Like, what's going? What are we gonna have going into 2023? Spider-Man 2 and maybe Wolverine. That's all we know so far, and I, that's the another next problem is that there's barely anything to be excited about. Yes, God of War Ragnarok looks really good. I'm sure it's gonna be a great game, but that's the only thing to look forward to first party-wise for Sony. And I actually want to direct some attention back to the state of play that happened during September when everyone was expecting Sony to do a PlayStation showcase, but they didn't for some reason. I, I guess they really didn't have anything to show because during that state of play, all it was was third party announcements and then one God of War story trailer. That's 
Eh. And don't get me wrong, uh, like the third party stuff is cool. Like it's cool seeing stuff like Tekken 8 and the new Yakuza remake. That's cool and all that. It's nice to see. But I also want to see first party games because like look at Nintendo's Direct that they held in September on the same day too, mind you. They had Pikmin 4, a new Fire Emblem game, and a release date for Tears of the Kingdom, which was Breath of the Wild 2, and some other surprises. Yes, it wasn't the best Direct ever, but they still had stuff to show. There was actually stuff to get excited about for next year. Sony has nothing exciting happening next year. After God of War Ragnarok, it's just dead silence, and I don't like that. I want to actually know what's going on. I know Sony's games take more time than Nintendo, but... I feel like Sony tries way too much to focus on graphics and making these games super cinematic rather than just making a few more games. And I'm not, and listen, I know games are a huge undertaking. I understand that <laughs> completely. They are difficult to make, especially with Sony since they push the hardware so much. But I wouldn't mind seeing Sony just make some more games that aren't, don't have to be so cinematic. They don't have to be so detailed. They can just be fun games like Astro's Playroom, which I think is a really good game. That's not that graphically in intensive on the system, but that's still a really good game. Honestly, it's probably one of Sony's best games, if I'm going to be completely honest. So yeah, I kind of wish that the game output was a little bit better. I feel like let's get some more announcements going or more information on previously announced titles like Spider-Man 2. It is coming out next year. I thought we, should, I thought we would have seen a gameplay trailer by now, but nope. Nothing. Yet. And now moving on to my last and final point is something that kind of recently happened. And this is honestly the thing that really made me want to make this video was the whole PlayStation Stars thing and the one thing part of that. Now, if you don't know, I hope I had the right name and I'm not changing it. PlayStation Stars is like the new like subscription service sort of thing for Sony. It's free. You, you can do it for completely for free. But basically, if you buy a bunch of stuff on like the PlayStation Store and on like it also collects a lot of trophies then you can get like some more like exclusive stuff like i believe you can get like icons and stuff like that which is okay but there's also the fact that you'll get better and you'll have better first customer support than like normal people will and the problem i have with that is just the simple fact that i feel like sony could do a little bit better with it just feels kind of weird to make better customer support something that's hidden behind like a subscription service like imagine if it like Let's say Walmart, for example, best example I know, like their customer service, you don't actually get good customer service unless you actually pay for like whatever their subscription fee is. That is absolutely ridiculous. And like, I know it's not like not everyone uses customer service, but it just feels like another thing that it just makes me feel like Sony can do whatever they want. And like, they don't, they don't need to try. It makes me feel like they don't have to try at all. People will give them their money no matter what. And I feel like they're really starting to show that, especially with the lack of games coming out soon. And again, the lack of systems to try and maximize profits on said systems. And then also the, the whole thing with the customer service thing. I'm just, it's getting annoying at this point. So just to recap real quickly, cause I already recap, but I'm gonna recap again. Low, si low, low system units that barely are being sold in stores, basically so that way they can get as much profit as freaking possible from online because making it limited and online, well, you're gonna maximize profits that way, it seems. That has proven true quite well. A lack of games coming out in the future or even know about in the future and also just putting cus better customer support behind a subscription service yeah, do you kind of see why I'm tired of Sony right now? And don't get me wrong, I want to see them do well. They deserve money, but not right now. They need to do a lot more with PlayStation 5 in the future. Because, to be honest, PlayStation 5 has been a good system. I've had some good experiences with it, but I feel like this year I've barely been playing it as much as I used to. I don't know. Maybe it's just because I've gotten into other stuff, but I don't know. But even so, that's not good. I'm still playing my PS4 way too much, but even so and like it kind of goes back to that video i made a while ago where i talked about why i think the ps4 is better than the ps5 and when you should get that one instead because the ps4 actually had games for it sony actually released a lot of games for it but now sony only has like six games on it it's better than microsoft but still like look at nintendo and they're actually putting out quite a lot of games and i know their games aren't as dip like aren't as detailed and cinematic but they're still fun games they feel more like games if I'm gonna be completely honest, but that's not for today. That, I'm not gonna get in that debate today, but 
that's where I'm going to end the video. So let me know in the comment section what you think. Let me know if you guys are getting a bit tired of Sony and want to see them change. And if you disagree, let me know in the comments below why. And yeah, and subscribe if you're brand new as well, because I'll try to do more stuff like this maybe. Though, again, like I said at the beginning, I'm going to try and get a little more optimism because I do want to try and remain optimistic. Maybe Sony can get better. Maybe 2023 will have a lot bigger games or not. Only time will tell, I suppose. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out, and have a good day.